All right, we are moving on to 2.05. This is an honors assignment. So if you are not taking the class for honors, you can skip this video. So of course we cannot see into the future. We don't know what's gonna happen. So with that being said, we need to kind of plan for the future. So one thing that financial experts agree is that Americans typically are not saving enough for the future. We're living day to day, week to week, paycheck to paycheck, but we're not really planning and saving for the future. One thing we all need to try to do are start our retirement accounts. Often your bosses or employers offer a retirement savings plan. Those are really important. And even better, if your company has something called contribution matching, that means if you put a percent of your salary into the retirement account, they will match that same percent. So let's say I put 5% away, they will put 5%. And often it caps out at some point. So they might, they might have contribution matching up to 3% or up to 10%. It just kind of depends on the company. You want to read that language and look for it. But that is free money. If you put 3% of your salary away, they will match it and put 3% of your salary also into that same account. When you leave, that match comes with you. The U.S. government also offers tax incentives to businesses that contribute to employee savings plans, as well as offering tax incentives to people who contribute to the savings plans. Okay, so some retirement accounts are investment ba based, meaning their value will depend on how the con contributions are invested. Others are a fixed benefit at retirement age, regardless of market conditions. So just kind of when you are starting a new job, that is important stuff to ask and look into. An IRA is another type of retirement account, but it's not through a business. It's one that you as an individual open. So the government also has tax incentives for you to, to open up an IRA or individual retirement account. There are two different kinds. For example, a Roth IRA is a retirement account in which you put money into it after you've already paid taxes on the money, okay? So in a Roth IRA, the money you put into the Roth has already been taxed. When you withdraw the money, when you're older and retired, um, often it will not be taxed when you withdraw it because you paid the tax when you put it in. They say that you can make withdrawals for certain things like education um, expenses and college tuition, but really be careful. If you are saving for retirement, it should be a, you should be not touching it until retirement. Uh, so the tax benefit of the Roth IRA is when you withdraw the money, it's not taxed anymore because you paid the taxes now, you don't pay the taxes when you're older. I kind of like that a little bit because when I'm older, I'm not working, so I don't want to have to pay as, many, as much taxes. But I can also say, I can also see not wanting to pay taxes now because you may not be making as much money. I get it. It's a trade-off. A traditional IRA is the opposite. You put the money in before it has been taxed. It often lowers your current income because the money is going into that retirement account before it is taxed. Therefore, when you retire and start withdrawing the money, it will be taxed at that point. It is important to know whether a savings program is an opt-in, meaning you choose to participate, or an opt-out, meaning you're automatically signed up unless you click the button to opt out. So there's so many studies that show that people are more likely to sign up for something if it is automatic. They don't want to click the box. They don't want to click the box to opt in, but they also don't want to click the box to opt out. So companies have started automatically making everybody opt in and you have to click the button to opt out. This is important because it increases everyone's um, willingness to save for retirement. All right, employer incentives are great, but let's suppose you need to save and grow your money before you have a full-time job as an adult. Charlie's a 10-year-old who dreams of becoming a veterinary doctor. His parents decide to put money aside for his college. How much money will they need to invest to afford a year of college. So we need to know, this is where some math comes in, 
Future growth is the value of an investment based on an assumed percentage of growth over a set period of time. And we have the formula future value equals the investment times one plus the interest rate. Remember that interest rate needs to be changed from a percent to a decimal. So one plus the decimal equivalent of that interest rate raised to the power of the time of that investment. All right, so Charlie's parents, let's see, how much is that first year of tuition keeping in mind inflation? So Charlie's what, 10? And he's not going to college for another eight, uh, eight years at least. So we need to figure that college will be more expensive in eight years. So uh, Charlie's parents figured that they would need at least $25,000 in eight years. So then they have one times, oh, sorry, investment times one plus interest rate. So then they're going to say the interest rate they can get for the CD, the certificate of deposit is four and a half percent. And they know that it's gonna be eight years. So now we can work backwards. So 1.045 to the eighth power is 1.42, then do 25,000 divided by 1.42. And we figured that Charlie's parents need to put in that CD $17,605. In eight years, that $17,605 should be $25,000. So if they don't have that money to invest, let's say the grandparents are gifting him some, and then the parents are contributing $100 each month, how much would be the account at the end of the year? This is where we use a compounding calculator to help us figure out that, because now we're not just putting in one amount and waiting eight years, we're putting in 10,000 and adding 100 every month for the next eight years. All right. So part one, go to the pace chart. Don't click on these templates. Go to the pace chart and download the 2.05 template and research a new car. What kind of car do you want? What's the sticker price? It needs to be a minimum of 15,000 and don't go over 50. How many years do you have until you turn 25? Review the interest rate options from your prior assessment or find a financial institution that will offer you um, an online savings account or a CD that's going to give you a decent interest rate. I don't know when you're watching this video, but right now you should be able to find something in the four to five percent range or at least close to it. Um, tell me what type of financial product you are investing in and what is the interest rate. And then don't forget to use the compounding calculator. Okay. Part two how can you make up the difference between what you have saved and what you still need to purchase the car? Use the compound interest calculator, input your initial investment as well as your interest rate and the years your money will be invested. In, uh, input your monthly contribution, start with $50 and increase in $50 increments until you reach the price of the car. Keep track of your findings on the template. And then reflect on your findings. Write a paragraph describing what you learned about saving for future expenditures. Remember, please go to the template on the page chart, not this one. If you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great day.